and we're gonna hinge those hips back. We're gonna try to keep a nice flat spine. I like to draw my elbows back so I can squeeze the shoulder blades down and together, and you're just gonna pop back up to straight. Hinge, keep the knees soft, especially if your hamstrings are tight. Inhale, back up to straight. And just trying to keep as much weight into more of the heel of my foot. And we're just act, adding this very dynamic, it's called a good morning stretch. And you hand on the hips, really squeezing those shoulder blades down and together. Getting the whole backside warmed up, you guys. And then let's go for two and then for one. Okay, hands are gonna stay on the hips. We're gonna circle those hips around, big circles, clockwise, circling around. I know this looks like super geriatric, but let me tell you, <laughs> that low back <laughs> and that sacrum, I don't care what age you are, take care of that back. And so we're just circling counterclockwise now. And it's a really important warm up because we're also getting in a little bit of the hip extension as I push my hips forward. And this is all from the hips, you guys, not the torso. And you know, come to think of it, we would do this before boxing. You know, so this isn't a geriatric stretch. <laughs> it's a good stretch to keep in your repertoire. All right, now let's move into some knee up, just knee to the chest stretches. So standing knee to chest, pull up on the knee, and you're also getting a little bit of balance. I don't know what happened there. So knee up to the chest, keep the core tight to maintain that balance. And again, these are all dynamic, dynamic stretches, we go through these as active recovery stretches throughout the workout so that your limbs and your joints stay nice and happy and healthy. Just pulling those knees up, alternating. Last one. Good. And now let's take it to external rotation of the hip, kind of like up and over the fence, up and over the fence, a little roundhouse kick. So we're going external rotation, the knee, hip, ankle all goes out away from the body. And you do need some balance and core with this. Again, this is really good to loosen up those hips, especially with all the leg work in these body weight boot camp classes. There's a lot of leg stuff. Okay, last one. Now we're gonna go internal rotation. So what that looks like, you take the leg up and then you bring it back in. So it goes out and in. And I'm adding this little um, snap. So we're still going up and over the fence, but now we're taking the leg out in. So external to internal rotation. So this is more internal. One might feel more awkward than the other. Like, I feel like this is a little more awkward than the other one. <laughs> but you get a little more adductor here. And we're going to go one more this side. Awesome. Um, so just some little trainer tips here. Take the class at your own pace. I will try to cue for all levels. Um, low impact versus high impact. You just take it at your own pace, you guys. Take a break when you need to. I've got a mat nearby because we're gonna do some things on our knees. So I'm just jogging here, lightly in place on the balls of my feet. So like this could be a great um, active recovery rest for you in between some of the high intensity exercises. So we're just jogging in place. Nice and light. Really getting used to like how to absorb the ground force reaction with our body. You don't want to sound really heavy on your feet. You want to be really light. And let's go ahead, let's actually address some, um, let's address the feet. So I just want you guys to, as best you can, <laughs> roll uh, over the toes and stretch the tops of the feet. This is like something you do in dancing, um, yoga, you know, just address those feet. I like to work out 
barefoot sometimes. Um, like today I do, I'm gonna work out barefoot. So um, if you don't have, or if you have shoes on, this is a little harder to do. But now what I'm gonna have you do, shoes or no shoes, this one's a good one. Also just calf extensions. And up and down, we do a lot of jump roping in the class, fake jump rope, jump rope. So jump rope without a jump rope. <laughs> so you wanna train those calves. It's also just really good if you're sitting all day, you guys. So getting those calf lifts <sighs> until you feel the burn on these. <sighs> it's really helpful to have a stair that you can drop those heels down and get that ex ankle extension in. So just a couple more here. Of course, I'm always adding the arms when I can. All right, so now just to stretch the calf a little more statically, go ahead and extend one leg out. The other leg is bent and I'm gonna hinge again, toes stretch out to the shin, sweep it all the way up, up high and then hinge, sweep it low and all the way up. So I'm gonna show you from the side view so you can see that my back is nice and flat. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Down, circle his arms around. Really nice stretch for calves. All you runners out there, calves. Running with your calves and not your glutes. <laughs> so like, get those calves stretched. Okay, second side, you guys. So you wanna get that foot to point up to the shin. So you wanna dorsiflex that foot. Stretch it up, circle those arms. So again, targeting the upper body too. Get the upper body warmed up as well. Circling those arms. Need some balance with this one too. Woo. <laughs> core, pretty much core for everything, you guys. And last one for that yummy, dynamic calf stretch. All right, getting warmed up. Go ahead and put on some music if you want, you guys. Um, in the background, I've got background music on. It's very low, though, super low, so you can hear me and the music isn't distracting. All right, so let's just take it up a little bit with those heels now. So heel kicks to the booty. I'm gonna swipe your um, messages there <laughs> so I can see myself. And heel kick. So I've got my hands here behind my back, heels up. This is a little bit lower intensity than I'm doing right now for you guys. I'm not kicking up as high. There's no added arms in there. So let's go for about another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, and one. Okay, now let's combine the arms, but we're going to go low impact with this one. So basically, booty kick, punch, booty kick, punch, um, opposite arm, opposite leg. It's okay if you do the same side. This is just what feels more natural to me. So we're going heel kicks with a straight arm punch Okay, and this is low impact, you guys. So when we bring it up to the high impact, you know you can always come down to this low impact variation. And now just pick up the pace. Right, so you can always come down, you guys. You can always go from low to high, and high to low. But we're just picking up the pace now. Punching and kicking at the same time. And 10 more seconds. And five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, now, side to side on the balls of my feet. If you've been taking my classes during the shelter in, I've incorporated a little bit of some boxing, some shadow boxing. Um, super simple um, techniques, nothing crazy, and then even some kicks, so, so fun. So we're just going side to side and hugging those arms in, 
And I just want you to loosen up those shoulders by shrugging them up and down. Side to side on those feet. Really simple, but keep those shoulders relaxed. Okay? So now I'm turning a little bit to the side. So I've got less squared off position. Shoulders and hips about 45 degrees, just facing a little bit out. So here now square, here, left foot forward, right foot's a little behind. So we're just in that like traditional boxing stance. And now I'm going front to back, front to back on the balls of the feet. Keeping it super simple, you guys. Hey, core tight, now add that jab. So I'm only jabbing on that second hop forward. Keeping it really simple. And just a few more of these. So jabbing left, keeping the other hand close to my face. And last one. Okay, now back to center. So hug the arms in. We're still, we're squared off here. Now I'm gonna turn. Right foot forward. If you need to take a break, you can. Just go front, back, side to side like this. Just going a little bit lower impact. Otherwise, stay up on the balls of the feet. I'm barely picking up my feet, you guys. Really light. So now this is a southpaw stance. Not too many fighters stand with this southpaw stance. And we're adding that jab every other um, every other hop. And I'm breathing on that jab. Because you really want to get that quick back, you want to retract back quick. And we're just going a couple more here. And last one. So really simple, you guys. And look, you've just been like basically skipping rope practically for probably a couple minutes, which is a long time. All right. So let's bring it down. Three, two, and one. Okay, feet between hip width and shoulder width. Toes out a little bit, just slightly turned out. And we're gonna rock ourselves to the center, get those arms up and ready. And we're gonna go into a nice plie, or you can call it a sumo squat. <laughs> and we're just little bounces up and down. And just about five, four, three, two, and one. Woo, bring those arms up. Add a little forward fold. Stretch out those hammies and the low back. Let's inhale, sweep it back up. Okay, now we're just gonna squat down and up for 15. Still toes out, knees out. Chest stays tall. Spine stays straight. So I'm not doing this. You wanna get really erect, but also resist gravity. Resist it because that's what we're using as our load. Our external load is our body weight, which is all relative, and gravity. It's constantly pushing us down. So just about five more. Hips go down and back, shin stays vertical. You can't go wrong with squats, you guys. And last one. Okay, now I mentioned we do a lot of those dynamic um, active recovery stretches. So one we can do right now is an active recovery quad stretch. So just that simple standing quad stretch, but I'm not holding it for a certain amount of time. It's a little bit more active. So if you can time it where the foot and the hand just Connect and other arm up for balance. These are so good, you guys, because you get a little less muscle soreness working out this way. At least I find that it works for me. Last one when I add these active recovery stretches. All right, so now let's bring it up a little bit to upper body and core. And so hands are gonna come behind the head, just fingertips lightly touching 
elbows out to the side, squeeze the shoulder blades down and together. We're gonna bounce on one leg, crunch it, and then bring it back down. So I'm actually side bending. Okay, so you're actually trying to reach knee to the armpit versus just this, you guys. Okay, so we want more side bending so you can get into those obliques, into those side abs. Plus, you're getting a lot of work, a lot of glute work, leg work on that standing leg. And this is great if doing side planks isn't available to you for whatever reason, like, you know, side planks on your forearm. This is another alternative. Okay, last one here. Now, we're gonna go to the second side, balancing on that other leg, whichever leg you started with, and actually flex your spine. And get the obliques to do the work. QL, so an area that's just above the hip, and it can get tight. And let's add about five more little side bends here. Also keeping those arms up, it works your arms and your shoulders. Just working those shoulders. And last one there, okay. Side to side shuffle, just side to side. Feet really light on the feet. So whole idea is just to keep your heart rate up <laughs> for a good 45 minutes. You know, like sweat, Get some of the toxins out if you ate more than usual this weekend or ate stuff that wasn't that great and drank. Sweat it out. Get, get some of those toxins out. <laughs> All right, so keeping it here, we're gonna add some seal jacks. So you start with feet together, jump out wide, arms wide, and then comes in narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Now the low impact version could be this for you. Just taking some big steps out, arms come out at the same time. Just stay here. The other version is you just pause after each jump. So that would be the next level. And then of course, you just keep on going, touch and go. Touch, go, touch, go, here we go. So let's go for about another 15 seconds of these, you guys. Seal jacks. I like these because they stretch the chest a lot and they get the shoulder blades retracted. And then just gives you a little bit more cardio, I think, in my opinion. All right, three, two, and one. Okay, take it out wide, feet wide, toes forward. And let's go into a side lunge. Bring it to center, side lunge, other side. Bring it to center, so stationary, side squat, side lunge. It's probably more anatomically a side squat than really a side lunge. So whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> but always get those hips back. Hips back first. And now side to side, a little bit more of a rhythm here. Of course, always adding those arms, push, pull. Legs, legs, legs. Push, pull, push and pull. Getting that breath in. And then let's just add another five, four, three, two, and one. Now bring it down to the center. Got a nice fingertip stand, wide leg, forward fold, you guys. Notice your heart rate. <laughs> Let's take a nice twist. Wide leg twist and another twist. Just reaching fingertips up to the sky and then back down. And then let's heel to toe back in, just about hip width apart. And I'm gonna walk it back a little bit. If uh, you need more space, walk it back because we're actually gonna walk it forward into a walking plank or caterpillar. So feet about hip width apart. If your hamstrings are tight, bend those knees. And once your hands are flat, just walk them out, maintaining 
very little movement in the hips as you walk out. So you don't want to be wiggling your booty all around or let your hips sag because this is a core exercise. Once you get to that high plank for um, a little less challenge, you can come down to the knees with the shoulder taps. So just stay on the knees for the shoulder taps for a little bit more of a challenge. You're going to stay up onto the balls of the feet and add four taps, shoulder taps, and I'm doing them slow. Then pike your hips up, push the hands into the ground, and you're walking it back to a half forward fold. So just hands meet the shins after every rep. So let's walk it out again, walking it out to a plank. You can come down to the knees if you want to take that more modified version or keep yourself in that standard plank position. Then on those, after the four, pike the hips up, walk it back. Hands to shins, walk it back up. So a very functional way to get your planks in, more fun in my opinion. <laughs> and you're also working on shoulder stability, lots of core, even lots of hip stabilization, and walk it back. We're gonna do one more set here, you guys. Walk it out as if the hands were feet. So we're just walking out slow. Keep your thighs contracted and your hips up on the plank with the shoulder tap. And walk it back. Say, so from here on that last one, now you're gonna tuck and body roll up. So we're adding more of a unwinding of the spine. Reach up tall with those arms, they're gonna stay up. And I want you to pick up one foot, take a big step forward, you're gonna lunge. You're gonna push back. Take another step forward, pause here, lunge. So the front and back knee bend about 90 degrees. If you have anything going on with the knees and the push off doesn't feel good, or any of it just feels unstable, you're gonna stay here. Straight up and down for 10 reps on each side. And for the rest of us, we're gonna alternate through. Woo. And my floor is slippery. <laughs> so I'm gonna slow it down after I step forward. Core tight, really extend long through the arms, you guys. And I'm trying to keep everything in line, head, shoulders, over my hips. So I'm not dropping my chest forward. Only a few more left here, you guys. Hopefully you guys that were doing one side at a time switched already. <laughs> All right, and hands down. Okay, if you need to get a drink of water, go ahead. I'm gonna check in on you. All right, okay. So back to our hops, or a little side to sides. We're gonna add on to our shadow boxing. So really boxing is not just punching out through the arms, it's also center and your hips, right? So we've got, when we go into some jab crosses, which we're gonna get into, that's coming from your hip on that cross. But right now, just light on the balls of the feet. Really light, and loosening up those shoulders. All right, now I'm going back into my standard boxing stance. And we've already been here, and we already know how to jab as we step forward, right? So this is when you're actually gonna jab to your opponent. Okay, but I need power from my core to do that. All right, so it's gonna look like this. I'm hopping forward and back. So every step forward is a punch. Okay, I'm going slow for you guys because we want to get this coordination down and the hopping, <laughs> it'll get exhausting after a while. Just two more. There we go. And now just front and back. Now let's add on, we're gonna add the jab cross. Going slow, this is what it looks like. Jab, cross, 
step back, step. So whenever I jab, I'm stepping forward and then I'm pivoting and rotating on that back foot. So jab, cross, step back, jab, cross, step back. Let's just keep it here, jab, cross, back. Okay, and you always wanna keep your hands close to your face, jab, cross, jab, cross, I'm stepping forward and then back to recovery. Jump back, all right? And I'm really trying to bring those arms back quick to protect myself. And last one. Okay, now back to center. Loosen up those shoulders. And we're just going side to side. All right. Monday. <laughs> I chose to do these workouts on Monday because I need to motivate too. You know, even as fitness instructors, the shelter in place has been pretty challenging on my psyche. <laughs> but uh, it's good to have you guys here because it really helps. I think everyone just motivates everybody. We're here together on the virtual, getting a workout at home. No equipment needed. Woohoo! All right, so now I switched sides. More of a southpaw stance, right foot forward, left foot back. And we're just going jab, back. Step, jab, back. Step, jab. So you're at the same time. It's a jab and a step. So we're keeping it really simple. You're just jumping, lightly hopping, I should say. Getting in those jabs, really easy. Other hand is close to my face. Last one here. Okay, now we're gonna add that cross. All right, so now jab, cross, and back. Jab, cross, and back. Jab, cross, jab, cross, forward, and step back. So you wanna get in that Recovery, get away, jump back, forward, and back. Just a few more here, you guys. And last one. Okay, good. Now, let's actually come into jump rope. So circling at the wrists. If you have a real one, go ahead and grab it. Definitely. And such a good cardio workout. I love jumping rope. Um, if you don't have, if you don't like running, this is a great alternative. <laughs> and again, I'm really light on my toes. Okay, so just side to side, circle at the wrist and the elbow. Keep it going here. Give me about another 10 seconds. Seven, four, two, and one. Okay, taking it back down to the ground, you guys. Let's come back down the same way we did earlier. Walk off that plank. I want you to come down to the knees. Hands are going to be a little bit narrower, okay? Just a little bit. I'm on my knees here. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go into pretty much a tricep push-up. Sit back. You're going to go forward, tricep push-up, sit back. So like a wide knee child's pose. This is where you might need some cushion for your knees. And it's a nice way to work through um, your hips and back and also just like taking a break in between those tricep push-ups. So tricep push-up, sit back. Really grip those hands under the earth, you guys. Like, make a pancake with those hands. Spread those hands wide, like the fingertips. Really spread them wide. Front to back. As we push back. And then last one here. And then back into that child's pose. Okay, 
We're gonna use our mat again. Face it this way. Okay, this is a full kneeling position. And then you're gonna extend one leg out. Let's tip all the way to that side. Kick the leg up. And then you're gonna bend the knee to elbow, elbow to knee, and extend. So elbow, knee, knee to elbow, side crunch. Making sure that that right hand is under the right shoulder. Knee to elbow, elbow to knee, extend. Like I'm really kicking that foot out. And reaching tall. Then I can feel this in the booty too, so nice little booty work out there. All right, pick it up for five more. Two and one. All right, back to that full kneeling position. Second side, extending through the opposite leg. Come all the way down, supporting through bones, stacking over bones. That's good support when you are supporting, when they're stacked, when the bones are stacked. And then let's pull knee to elbow, elbow to knee, but getting in that side crunch, you guys. So side crunch. Knee to elbow, elbow to knee, and really kicking out, getting in that full extension of the arm and the leg. So working through the whole side leg, the glute. Crunch it in, extend long. Crunch it in, extend long. Because you know, the spine really loves being able to move in all directions. That's its job. Last one here. Woo! <laughs> Good work for both booty and this side abs. So let's, speaking of which, let's come on down to the forearms. And we're on knees and forearms to start. We're gonna take <laughs> the leg and fire hydrant. <laughs> so this is the peeing dog exercise. So we're abducting the hip, knee, ankle out to the side. <sighs> really good for that medial glute or glute med. The one that helps us balance so there's Glutes, muscles in the glutes that help us with balance, help support the hips. And just two more of these because they add up quick. Woo! A little stretch to the side. I'll flip around so you can see the other side here. So we're switching it up. Abduct, hip, knee, ankle. And I'm keeping that foot flexed, you guys. Now it's going to feel like it's a double exercise here because you've already been stabilizing on the other leg. So, woo, you can really feel those glutes burning on this exercise. It's a really unassuming exercise. Okay, and last one. So I do between 10 and 12 on those fire hydrant exercises. Okay, all fours. Add a little cat cow. And these are more dynamic than you would maybe do in yoga because I'm speeding it up. Just make sure to inhale, exhale here, and last one, inhale and exhale. So not done yet on our core stuff. We're gonna take the right arm straight up without shifting the hips. And then I want you to extend through the opposite leg for bird dog, try to square off those hips as best you can. And then pull the knee to elbow, elbow to knee and then extend. So the biggest thing here, you guys, is when you go to extend those limbs, you're not collapsing in that lumbar. You wanna keep your abs tight, like you're bracing for impact, okay? So always think like whenever you're doing core work, it's, you're trying to really brace your center and switch sides. So it just basically stays contracted throughout the entire exercise. Make sure you're breathing, of course. Second side, float the left arm up. I'm really trying to get the arm up by the ear too. So if you're really tight in your lats, try taking the arm out to the side, about a 45 degree angle. That will help. Otherwise, the elbow is bent. So you want to really keep the arm straight. Second side, brace, hollow out that core. The knee to elbow, elbow to knee. We're basically doing almost like a cat-cow but I'm not extending, I'm not adding that much extension. I'm just coming to neutral, round, and then extend, 
And these limbs are working hard too. I'm not going lazy on that extension when you take your arms and your arm and your leg away. Okay? And last one here, you guys. You can take a really simple exercise and make it really challenging. <laughs> All right. So to transition, we're going to roll back up, hips up, transition to standing from a down dog, and then tuck and body roll up. Woo! So little head rolls there, neck rolls. And then just notice how the spine feels. You should feel, you should feel taller. That's why I love about doing core work, because I always feel like my, I'm taller, my spine is healthier. All right, we're kicking it back up. So we're doing pretty good here, you guys. Not too much longer for the cardio stuff. So earlier we did some little low impact booty kicks. Now we're gonna pick it up a little bit more. So you're gonna get more of that knee flexion in, more heel to the butt, so really jumping. And then we're adding the punches. So keep the core tight, get those heels up. And let's go for about another 20 seconds of these, adding the punches. Coordination-wise, it doesn't really matter. Just punch the arms at the same time. You're kicking those heels up. And you know, make sure you're breathing. Five more seconds. Okay, and three, two, and one. Okay, let's go back. Legs, we're gonna add a little bit more higher intensity with the legs. So low impact version, you're jumping out and then you're pausing as you jump back in, feet out and then jumping in. It's a slower jump out and a slower jump in for the low impact. For the higher impact, it's just touch and go. Jump out, jump in. And you're just reaching. The hands in and out, or sorry, down. <laughs> and then again, slow or low impact. You jump out, you pause, you jump in, you pause. It's just slower, you guys. Give me about 10 more seconds. Three, two, and one. Keep it here, reach it up. Sweep it over to the other side. Legs are still burning. One more to each side. Good, all right, now, butt up, head down. We're gonna walk it out again. So my feet are wide, as you can see. And my hands are about shoulder width apart. Low and, uh, sorry, modified version of the push-ups. Just come down to your knees, and they're regular, push-ups you guys. For standard push-ups, we're going wide with the toes. And you're going to try to give me 10 push-ups here of either standard or modified. Okay? And you're really pushing that ground away from you. and really pushing the ground away from you, really keeping the hips up, contracting through the core and the legs. Take a bow, and let's bring those feet together. Step forward, right foot, and we're gonna take a twist. Just that nice runner's lunge with a twist. And then second side, so notice I'm stepping out past, so to the outside of the hands, and then you're gonna twist open, and then back. And then we're gonna step forward again. Add one more to each side. Just a little bit faster transitioning though. All right, now come down. We're gonna add another set of push-ups. So you can choose between the uh, modified or the standard. So modified, knees are on the ground, and you're trying to bring your chest all the way down for modified. So now we're gonna go eight. So we're just going down in reps. Make sure you're really pushing the ground away from you. And 
And I like to rest by piking up into a down dog. Woo! But uh, I did a bunch of push ups yesterday. So <laughs> I'm kind of feeling them today, you guys. Woo! All right. Okay, now we're going to stay down here for some slow mountain climbers. So basically just tapping the foot, bringing the knee all the way up. So slow mountain climbers. And you're probably already feeling those arms, obviously, from the push-ups. So you're getting a double workout here in the arms. And we're just keeping those abs nice and tight. Woo! And coming on down. Oh. Okay, heart rate's up, you guys. I'm sure yours is. All right, let's flip it on over onto our backs for some more abs. So we're gonna roll it down. Um, we're gonna go hands behind the head and pick up the feet. So we have this flat back, so really flat. And then I'm gonna have you rotate and then rotate to the other side. So with bicycles, it's all about form. I mean, everything's about form, but bicycles, you don't want to do these fast. You want to do them a little bit more controlled with a nice, even slower pace. In my opinion, you just really get more benefit out of it. Instead of flailing all over the place like this, which you're doing something, but you get a little bit more out of those core muscles and it's harder when you go slower. Woo, last one here. Okay, bridge those hips up to stretch the whole front of the body. And then bring yourself up to um, Dandasana. This would be just seated mountain in yoga. Hands are gonna come behind you. Fingertips facing forward, you guys. Bend the knees, feet flat. Roll the shoulders down away from the ears, lift your chest. Press the feet into the ground and lift to the cobbler's table. So really good if you, again, are on the computer all day, your shoulders are rounded most of the time. Just get those shoulders back and really kick your hips up as high as you can. And this is a longevity pose cobbler's table. So do like 30 of those a day and you'll live longer. <laughs> I think I'll stick to that. All right, so now boat. Feet down, hands flat again, into cobbler's table. Booty squeeze, booty squeeze, you guys. Fingertips forward to really open up those shoulders. Exhale, you're gonna lower, just balancing. Arms out, feet up if you can. You're not here too long, you guys. You're not here in boat too long. Toes, and then hands and feet. So I'm trying to do all this without touching the ground. Just transition without touching the ground. Hips up, cobbler's table, slowly lower, and boat pose, so another good core exercise. All right, now let's go ahead and just take it a little forward here for that forward stretch for the whole spine. And of course the hamstrings and the calves because we've been doing a lot of jumping. Swing your legs around, come back into that plank position. And let's go ahead and add some more of these taps. Again, you can come down to the knees to do these, you guys. You're still gonna get a lot of core work in. But now we're just gonna go for 15 reps, straight up, 15 reps, side to side, tap. So just tapping the shoulder without too much movement in your uh, hips. And rest. Woo! Butt up, head down, walk it back. <sighs> Tuck and body roll up. Okay, we're really close to the end here, you guys, closer. We're just gonna add another couple of leg exercises and then we'll add some dynamic stretches. All right, so curtsy lunges. We're gonna go into a curtsy lunge with that right foot. Step back, you're gonna sweep the leg out to the side to go right back into 
curtsy lunge on the left leg. So a little bit of balance with this one. Use your arms to help you. And so for easier um, uh, variation, just tap the foot out and you don't have to bring the leg up. So you can just add that little toe sweep and that's fine. I'm just adding more of that hip extension, a little bit of obliques. And last one here. Awesome. All right, shake it out to the center. I'm just getting in those nice little center jogs. Loosen up those shoulders. Before we go into the second side. So curtsy lunges are good, you guys. Works the butt a little bit more. And you can always add um, weights to this. Core tight. And you're really taking that step back and over. Both knees bend is the same amount. So you're getting in that back lunge just as much as the front lunge. And that hip. If you can get that leg all the way up, great. If not, this is fine too. The low impact variation or just modified version rather. And sweep. Last one. Nice. All right. Jog it out. Just jog it out to the center. Ooh, before we take it to some dynamic stretches. All right. And let's actually pull that knee up towards the chest again. And we're going to alternate these just like we did in the beginning. So you're... Warm up stretches, you can duplicate them, just replicate them at the end. You'll probably feel looser towards the end of the workout, obviously, because you're warmed up. Now let's add more of a glute stretch. So you're gonna take hold of the shin and pull up on an angle. So you've got almost like a standing pigeon because we did so much work on the glutes. This is also a good way to warm down because your heart rate's up, so I like to actually just take it down with some dynamic stretches. Okay, now let's go into a low lunge with a reach. Now, if this is too much, that's fine. Just bring your forearm above the knee and reach up and over. So this whole side gets stretched, and you can go as deep as you'd like into your low lunge. This is fine, whatever works for you, especially if you have some spinal stuff going on. Just go to where it feels like you can actually get that side bend. And then straighten out the front leg. Hamstring stretch. And calf. So some half splits. Toes to the shin always because you want to get that dorsiflexion in the foot. All right, let's switch sides. Second side, low lunge. Just go as deep as you can. You also want to make sure when you're lunging, low lunging, you're not collapsing into your um, sacrum. So you're still lifting up and out. So this is also appropriate. You can also retract back out of that and then just get this side nice and long. And see how open I am? I'm not rotating towards the leg. I'm keeping very open so I can really get the oxygen in and really sink into it. But remember to keep the core lifted it's really easy to like just kind of collapse into those. So we've got half split on this side. Sometimes I just like to sit back all the way. And, ooh, hamstring. Okay, let's take that back. And then just one more stretch, you guys. Let's down dog it. So nice finisher. Down dog is always my go-to. So if you're pretty um, mobile in this, you want to step the feet further back. If you're pretty mobile like, and you have lots of flexibility and you can get your heels down, keep stretching those feet back. If you have tight hamstrings, soften the knees to make your spine longer, to create a longer spine. You don't want to be here in your down dog, okay? Just let the head hang heavy. Ah, take an exhale. 
And then tiptoe those feet forward. We're gonna tuck and body roll again all the way out. Last big stretch here for the chest. Just draw those arm bones back, clasp the hands. Really open up the chest.